Hey guys, Brent Aljo here, and I want to talk to you a little bit today about learning your electronics while you're not on the water. My season's come to an end for, for the most part, and today the weather is nasty. It's raining outside, um, just not conducive to sitting in a tree stand and uh, kind of enjoying some time not on the water as much as I've fished the last few months. So what can we do to learn our electronics better while we're at home, whether it's after work or on the weekends, at night, whatever the case may be. So what I've done is I've, I've turned my units on and I've turned one unit on simulator mode. Humminbird gives us the option at startup to turn these units on simulator mode, which is a preloaded program from the factory that scrolls through and lets us see different things. And what I want to show you today is how to use that simulator mode to actually learn how to better use your electronics that will apply to on the water applications. So let's go to the units and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So on this unit right here, we're running a, a, a split screen. We've got obviously side imaging, and we've got down imaging and sonar. This is one of my favorite screens, and you can adjust the size of the screen right there, uh, to, you know, proportionate to how you want it. So what I want to show you is, okay, if we were actually idling around and looking at this stuff, what can we do to better understand what's going on? Okay, so first thing we want to do is we're idling around and we see we see this target here. Now, we don't know what it is for sure. Maybe it's an old bridge. If we go up here and hit the cursor in any direction, it freezes this screen. This is one of the most important things you can learn about your electronics is once you freeze this screen, it doesn't matter where you go, what the wind's doing, what the engine's doing, it doesn't matter. You can do anything you need to do or want to do from this position as long as you don't hit the exit button. So I'm going to take my cursor, I'm going to draw it over here on top of this target and I'm going to zoom in one time. I just hit the plus button one time and zoomed in. And right here we can see some fish, we can see shad on top of these rocks right there we can we can zoom that around we can and we take our cursor and we just move that around on top of that target anywhere we want to go it'll follow us we can we can zoom in a little more we can back out of it and then from that point wherever that cursor is we can mark waypoints by just hitting them by simply hitting the mark button that's all we've got to do okay now before we hit, as long as we don't hit the exit button, okay, we hit the menu button one time, okay, we can do anything we want to do from this screen. As you can see right there, we can change a lot of things right there. So let's go down to SI Enhance. We hit that screen, that's going to allow this little box to pop up on the bottom, okay, it shows our sensitivity, our contrast, sharpness. So what we can do is with the screen still frozen, we can move that sensitivity way up and you see the changes in the returns, okay? As the sensitivity goes up, your harder returns become brighter and brighter and your soft returns become brighter, but you don't, you don't want to go too high on sensitivity in in certain applications with hard rock just like this right here because it all kind of washes together. So this lets us learn where we want to be with sensitivity and contrast. There's the contrast going almost all the way up. It pulls the it pulls the brightness out, it throws the dark shadows, and lets us see what's going on. What we're wanting to do is create separation. Okay? And this lets you know what your unit will do to create that kind of separation. Okay? So as long as we're frozen in this screen, we can do anything we want to, okay? What I recommend is going in opposite directions with sensitivity and contrast, okay? When the sensitivity goes down, the contrast goes up. That allows us to make separation, okay? From there, you can kind of let 
the the unit dictate what you can see the best in in certain applications so when we're done with this screen we hit the exit button and as you can see it starts scrolling again okay this is going to catch us up the top of this screen is going to catch us up to real time what's underneath it so even if our boat drifted a quarter mile this is where we're at we can do this in all all different screens and applications there's full screen side imaging we can move the we can move this the size of the screen we were on 80 foot scale now we're on 60 foot and you can see how it how it elongates and separates everything we can change color palettes we can see right here what what color palette in in this same situation what color palette fits our eyes best okay there's a whole bunch of different ones they all look different between daytime and nighttime uh, what, whatever your you know whatever your application is you can learn sitting right here in your garage what's best for you I normally like amber but you know everybody's different then we can also go to down imaging or sonar. We can do the same things right here. Anytime we hit the cursor, freezes the screen. We can zoom in, move this around. We can look in detail at everything we want to. Hit the menu button one time, go to DI enhance. Take the sensitivity down a little bit. Take this contrast up. Look at the difference in separation already. We got rid of a lot of the clutter. We've got that exact separation that we want to see where all these fish sitting on the bottom. Target's here. We can move this around. We can see whatever we want to see right here. Okay. This just allows you some knowledge of what your units are capable of when you're on the water. You don't have somebody you know, you don't have a fishing partner wanting to make cast. You're not, you're not pressured to move on to the next spot or catch another fish. You're, you're just seeing what your units are capable of. And that's what the simulator mode will do for you guys. Okay. Now, we're going to go to my other unit real quick, which I just powered on in regular mode. Okay. Um, I just picked a lake. It doesn't matter what lake or where at. I just want to give you an example. Okay, so I went to a lake. We got a Lake Master uh, mapping chip in here, and I just want to show you guys a few things. What I have is in the Hummingbird chart menu, we have all kinds of different options here. We can make our contour lines visible. We have we can control the depth colors. Uh, we can control the depth highlight, so whatever depth of, of water we want to highlight, we'll highlight in green. We can change the depth highlight range, the shallow water highlight, and then we can also offset for the lake level by the water level offset. So let me show you what a few of these things do. So if I exit out there so you can see, our shallow water highlight is red. That's four feet or less. So anything that four feet or less, it shows up in bright red. We have a depth highlight of 15 foot. Okay, so that shows up in green. But as I said, our depth highlight range is plus or minus five feet. So that means anything from 10 feet to 20 feet of water is highlighted in green on this map. So as I drive around, I know where my 10 to 20 foot water is, I know where my shallow water is, and so on. So let's say I've got the water level offset at zero, so that would be at power pool. So let's say that the lake has come down five feet for winter drawdown. All we do is scroll over to negative five, and that adjusts all of our contour lines and everything on the graph five feet down. So if the lake was five feet down, it adjusts everything and you're back to ground zero. So those are the kind of things you can also check and learn at home. Not only that, but you can scroll around on maps uh, of your lakes that you're getting ready to go to. You can zoom in and take a look at potential potential spots, uh, a little underwater point right here, a bunch of hard contour lines right there, right next to it. You can drop a waypoint on that. Maybe that's something you want to go check out the next time you get on the water. So when it's raining or your, your lakes are froze, um, just remember, there's still ways to learn your hummingbirds while you're sitting at home. So... Take some of these tips and get better at learning your electronics.
Thanks, guys.